What's up everybody, this is Reverend Guns, and today we're going to be taking apart and cleaning a Sig Sauer P290RS. So the first thing we want to do is make sure it is empty and clear to work on. So right behind the trigger here is the magazine release. When you press that, the magazine will pop out. We don't want any cleaners or solvents on this, so we're going to set this aside for now. Next, you're going to see the slide lock lever right here. When you pull the slide all the way back, you'll push the slide lever up and you will lock the uh, slide into place. So go ahead and do that. Pull it back, push it up, and now you've got it locked into place. Now we can look down inside the barrel here and see that there is nothing inside the chamber. All right, so let's go ahead and uncock the slide. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger, or actually you don't even need to do that on this one. Um, to disassemble it, we need to uh, flip it over, and you're going to see a button right here on the side. Now, I know it's a little tricky to take this apart, um, but you're going to need like a punch or a little screwdriver or something to press that uh, when we do this. So what I do is, um, with the slide all the way back, okay, I hold it like this and you're listening for two audible clicks. The first click you're gonna hear is gonna be the slide lock releasing. The second one you're gonna hear is gonna be like a spring, you know, a, a boing sound. As soon as you hear that, you wanna stop, uh, stop releasing and, and hold it there. And that's the spot you need it to be able to push this pin through. So mm -hmm. listen closely and you'll hear what I'm talking about. That was the slide lock. If you barely heard that, I heard a little little ding. It should allow you to press the button through a little bit. Okay? Now you can release the slide. And you see the lever's popped out now. You should be able to just pull this out. Okay? Now the slide should just slide right off got the frame to take out the recoil spring guide rod you compress it towards the the muzzle and lift up slightly and I'll allow you to take that out now this is the guide rod and this has two springs in it okay so we'll clean both of those as well and to get the barrel out you push it forward a little bit okay so you can lift up the back and there's a little cutout right here and you'll notice that the the barrel is kind of bell shaped you just lift it up through there and that'll allow you to take out the barrel okay so these are the pieces we are going to be cleaning today tools you're going to need okay you already saw that we needed a i used a punch or whatever you use to get it disassembled i've got a uh, nine millimeter uh, barrel brush I've got a soft bristle brush uh, with a detail end on the end of it for smaller areas. I have a uh, harder bristle brush uh, to get the real stubborn carbon off. I don't use the uh, steel or brass because I don't want to run the risk of scratching anything on the slide or on the on the frame. And to me, it honestly, it's just excessive. You know, uh, not worth it if if you're gonna possibly scratch it up. Gun cleaner, okay. Um, I say try them. Find one that you like. Uh, there, there are several good kinds out there. Uh, once you find one that you're you're happy with, use it. Um, we're not going to need the bushing wrench, the Allen, or the screwdriver for this. So uh, we've got a nine millimeter jag. Uh, I use a jag over the uh, slotted cleaning rod, but the slotted cleaning slotted cleaning rod will work just as well. Um, I prefer the Jag because it only takes a few few swipes with it and, and you're done. Uh, I've got some gun oil. I have a rag just for gun oil. That way I know it's not contaminated with anything else. I've got some patches that we'll use to clean out the barrel. Q-tips sometimes come in handy for small little areas. And then I've got a couple rags here to uh, wipe stuff off as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and spray everything down. Come on, 
It's about time to get a new bottle here. And well, I like this stuff because it doesn't take very long at all for it to start breaking apart that carbon. All right, so I'm going to start with the barrel first because this is kind of the one thing that matters uh, how you do it. Um, everything else here, you can pretty much just go at it, scrub it down, you know, get it clean and wipe it off. But the, the barrel kind of matters how you do it. So grab your, uh, your bore brush here and you want to go in from the back. And yes, that means two things. So put it in the back and make sure you cram it all the way through. You don't want to stop in the middle of it. Just keep going in and out. And it might feel gritty at first. Um, that's that's the, the residue carbon that you're, you're trying to break up and get free out of there. You know, if you let it build up over a long enough period of time, likelihood of like a squib load could happen. So as you're doing this, you'll feel it get much smoother, a lot easier. And uh, once you're satisfied with how easy it's moving through, you can pretty much call it done. Now I'll grab my soft bristle brush and go over everything else. Get around the feeding ramp real well. Get all sides of this. Any crevice you see, there's probably something built up there even if we don't see it. We're just trying to break it loose so we can wipe it off. Shaft of the barrel. Make sure you get the muzzle end of the barrel real good. All right, and grab your rag. Go through, and we'll start wiping it off. All right, and the last thing to do to the barrel is cleaning out the bore. So grab your jag or slotted cleaning rod, whichever you're choosing. Um, with the jag, I only use uh, one patch at a time. What you do is you stab it directly in the center and you push it through. So again, go in from the back and push all the way through. Okay, and you'll see all that residue is what we're trying to get off okay so anything black on here it's no good so you want to keep doing this until you don't see any more black now this may never get completely like leave the the patch white um, it might be a, a, a slight gray to it as you see the second pass it's a lot better and I'm that's I'm gonna do one more just for good measure um, it might look wet, like, uh, as long as you're not seeing black on it, you're going to be sitting pretty good. Alright, so, that looks pretty clean to me. I'm going to call the barrel done. Set that aside, don't need the jag no more. And now we can just go through and, and scrub all the parts down. I just kind of worked my way across. Everything needs to be cleaned in some way, you know, this is a pretty small gun. A lot of people keep this in their pocket, you know, and we all know how dirty stuff can get just being in your pocket, whether if it's lint or dust or whatever. So take your time to go through, break everything loose. Let's get this wiped off. Look at that, nice and clean. A guide rod. Just kind of go through. Scrub it down, break everything off that you can. Get the ends good. And then we'll wipe that off.
the springs um, they're not exactly easy to to brush off so I mean you can attempt it a little bit here however you want to do it but basically I just run them through on the rag kind of dig them in there real good and then spin the rag uh, spin the spring through the rag and this will give it a really good wipe down and again we'll just kind of tuck it in there spin the spring through give it a nice wipe down okay we're gonna move on to the slide Like I said, just brush anywhere you can. You're not going to hurt this at all. You know, that's why I use the nylon brushes because it, it, especially with this cleaner, it's more than enough to, to clean off whatever it is you're going after. Strike your plate real good. I like to make sure I get around uh, the muzzle end. And anywhere you can possibly reach it. Then you want to work on the outside a little bit, you know, the, around the extractor that needs some cleaning. We all got dirty, grubby hands, so it's time to break off anything that might have been left on there from touching it, handling it, showing it to friends. And then we'll go through and wipe that off. And I start with a rag just to get the majority of it. Um, you know, unless you got really small fingers, you're probably going to need something else to get in some of these areas with. So I use uh, Q-tips on those areas. So like through here, kind of a groove. Yeah, you can probably get your finger in there for the most part, but not gonna hurt to go at it with a Q-tip. Really dig in there. And get the little slide rails. I'm gonna make sure those are free of debris so it doesn't have any issue trying to cycle. Q-tip will come in handy for where the guide rod rests. That actually gets dirtier than you think, even though there's really nothing going on there. Alright. We're looking pretty good. Last thing to do is the frame. Grab your frame and your brush. Get along those slide rails real good. This is your time to really brush it over and make sure everything's clean. Especially around the grips. Those like to Attract dirt real quick. Get around the trigger. Can't even get down. 
the magazine well a little bit just to make sure there's nothing in there and once you got it pretty well scrubbed down we'll wipe it down Now there's quite some small areas on this as well, so the Q-tips will come in handy again. I'm going to feed it through the mag well just to make sure there's no cleaner left in there. Q-tip here, and these little small areas that you really can't get your finger into, start rubbing it out. See, it's, it gets dirty in there, you just got to take the time to actually dig down in there and get it. slide rails real well get around the hammer you don't want to leave any solvent in here it's kind of the, the whole goal so anywhere you can get go for it all right that's looking pretty good. Time for some lube. So I grab my little gun oil rag and uh, smear a little little oil on it. Yeah, I know I'm pretty liberal with this stuff, but I like to do this all in one shot, not putting a little dab and then wiping stuff off. No, I, I don't do that. So on the frame here, you're basically wanting to do where the slide rail is because that's going to be constantly moving right so and the slide sits here and here and here and here now you're also looking for like wear marks like scratches or scrapes um, those are the areas that have major contact so you want to make sure that uh, you have oil on those to to help with the the movement and friction so anywhere you see little scrape marks you want to put put some oil there okay now we do not want to cover this entirely with oil if you do that it's gonna really attract dust and dirt and whatever else uh, to get all your gun uh, I like a clean looking gun I only need oil where you, where you need it the most. All right, same thing with the slide. We're, we want to get the rails real good, and then you're looking for scrapes or scratches. Um, looks like up here where the barrel kind of rubs a little bit. Um, we want to make sure all this stuff gets oil. So I'm starting with the rails, getting some in there. You know, obviously where the slides this in the frame looks like I've got a little scrape mark there and there and up here by where the barrel uh, rides and that's pretty much it um, do not put any on the extractor you don't want this to not be able to attach to a bullet 
and, and pull it out the way it's supposed to function so I don't put any oil on here. That and it's an exposed part so we don't want any dirt or dust or anything to get stuck to it and then uh, jam it up. Um, the guide rod I'll put it on the actual guy rod itself. I'm not too worried about the springs because this goes in it, in the springs, and that'll kind of help lube them as it as it functions. The barrel, again, you're looking for scratches, scrapes, any type of wear mark. Okay. Now, typically, like for this gun, um, you can pretty much do the whole thing except for like the top and the side that says 9 millimeter on here because all of it's internal and and touches something so I'll get the shaft of the barrel real good I'll get the one side and then on the underside um, you don't want to get this little peg here okay you don't oil that um, but everything else you can pretty much oil okay and the slide lock lever i do just the peg part of it just this is going to help it go in uh when we go to go to put this back together so that just leaves reassembly we're going to start with the slide got the muzzle end to my left here um we want to put the barrel in first and it's going to go with the this little peg thing uh sitting upward from this position now the one thing I need to point out here is there's like steps here okay and one of them looks like there's a little uh, half moon cut out right here might be able to see that okay that's where your guide rods gonna sit so remember that that point after we put this in so to put the barrel in remember it's kinda belled out here on the end of the muzzle so it's gotta drop into that little slot and then you push it through, drop it, and push it back. That's all there is to it. Okay, it just kind of drops in seats. The guide rod. Now remember, this is two springs. They go inside of each other. And then you take your your guide rod and stick it in the end. Now this the the springs are not conical. They're it, it can go in either side. So it really doesn't matter how you put these together. It just matter if you have both springs over this guide rod. Okay. To get the guide rod in, you put the end that doesn't have the black stopper here right below where the barrel goes. So when you push it in, you'll have to compress it. To get that rod into that little hole and then you will seat the black end on that little half moon cutout that I showed you just before we put the barrel in so this is what it should look like after you've installed it okay next thing is to put the uh, the slide back onto the frame you'll see that there's two little guide rails here those will line up with the little slots here you see on the back side of the slide and you just push it on okay now to put the slide lock lever back in you're gonna be looking through that hole there I don't know if you can see that very well but you might see that it's kind of blocked just a hair so you'll need to push back the slide just a hair so you can push uh, the the slide lock lever back in. So what what I do is I first put the slide lock in as far as it'll go, and this little peg is going to line up with the square in the side of the frame there. So when you push back the the slide just a hair, it should just push in a little more. And then it's going to stop you again because of this little little tab you see on the top of the slide lock. So at this point, you'll have to cock all the way back 
so the uh, that little peg will slide into the slot on the slide so pull it back push it all the way in and release it so now you've got it locked back into place we can do a little function check everything seems to be working and that just leaves us a final wipe down and what I do is I grab a, a clean rag and this is your opportunity to go through and polish everything off make sure there's no excess oil anywhere no excess solvents and make this clean and show ready alright there you have it we have just taken apart clean lubed and put back together a Sig Sauer P290 RS uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them down in the uh, comment section uh, don't forget to subscribe. That really helps me out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I also offer the online course to get your Texas license to carry a handgun. It's the four hour class broken down into segments and saves your progress so you can do it at your own pace. After completing the course, you can print your certificate. Then it'll help you locate an instructor close to you, no matter where you are in Texas, so you can complete the shooting portion of the course. This is all certified by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Check it out at reverendguns.com. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more firearms education.